this was a really daunting project i wasn't sure how difficult it was going to be and uh honestly it wasn't it wasn't that bad what is going on youtube welcome back to the channel welcome back to yet another video so the original plan for today or rather this week's video was to show you guys the valve mufflers that i was going to have installed on the car but unfortunately the exhaust tips that i chose to put on have been back ordered for a couple weeks and the exhaust shop owner that i'm taking my car to assured me that the exhaust tips are supposed to be here beginning of this coming week so while that's not this week's video again i know i've been talking about it but uh hopefully next week's video will be the exhaust clips and like showing you guys the mufflers being installed on the car but instead what we're going to do today is we're actually going to swap out my um oem black dash for the cinnamon colored extended leather dash that i've had sitting up on the shelves now for months um, i picked these up the same time i picked up the interior i bought it all together and i've just kind of been dreading putting it in but seeing how i'm not able to do the exhaust video that i wanted to do i figured now is as good a time as ever so i'm gonna take you guys along with me while i uh take out the interior and show you guys kind of step by step as best i can um for swapping the dash on your f10 so uh let's hop right into it so there's a couple things i want to note before we actually start hopping in here and taking panels out obviously we're gonna have to disconnect the battery from the car because we have to remove things like the steering wheel and we're gonna have to disconnect a bunch of stuff inside of the car and you don't want to risk throwing any fault codes or you know setting anything off and so obviously you know if your car comes with like electric seats and like the uh, electric like steering column adjustment set all of that up before removing the battery because if your seats are stuck forward like too much and you're kind of cramped in there and you're like don't have enough space to really work around anything i don't know how you would adjust those without needing to hook the battery back up i don't know if there's a manual adjustment down there it's just way too much work and so just giving you the heads up now if you're swapping the dash on your f10 or i guess any car even that has like a bunch of electrical like seats and uh, column adjustment whatever do all that stuff first then disconnect your battery because you don't want to be halfway through the job and realize you don't have room to take something out or remove something and then have to go plug the battery back in and risk throwing fault codes. So that's my note to you guys. Make sure you do that first and then disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There's tons of videos on how to do that. If you aren't aware, I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna video that. But I'm gonna start taking parts of the interior out and as I kind of take them out, I'll kind of show you guys where maybe screws are and what you need to take off and what you should be careful of. So let's move right into that. So we finally got this center console piece out of the way. This is the one that has all like the controls and stuff and all the buttons and the iDrive controller. And as you saw in the last clip, to take that out, you gotta pop this little like piece off that covers this, like the trim piece, and there's gonna be a screw under there. And once that's out, you should be able to just lift up on the cup holder, like lean this piece out, lean it over, disconnect everything and pull it out. Once that's out of the way, we have to get this trim piece out of the way. This tray has to come out to be able to take this assembly off and then we should have access to get to the bottom tray um, or the center console like tray uh, to be able to get it out. And so all of the screws, so there's two screws to take this trim piece off. There's one hidden back here. There's one right down here. Then there's this screw to be able to take the armrest like assembly out. There's another screw over here, which I've already removed. There's a screw here, a screw here, and then to be able to take this off to make room to find the two screws back here, there's one screw up front right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all this out and then follow up with you guys once I figure out how to get this bottom like portion off. All right, so we have all of the other little pieces off that I just showed you in the last clip, this little trim piece and the armrest housing. And so to be able to move this, I finally figured it out. Down here, there's gonna be a T20 screw there, a T20 screw there, of which I've already taken out. Down here, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter screw here and here. Again, I've already taken it out. And then back here, 
in those spots right there and right there, there's gonna be T27 screws. And then on either side, on the bottom down here, I don't know if you could see that, there's a hole right over here. There's gonna be a T20 screw down there and the same thing on the other side. And when you have all of those out, like I do, this thing will be loose and you'll be able to scoot it back just enough to be able to make room to pull the dash out. So I'm gonna continue taking stuff off like the steering wheel and these panels and stuff and then hopefully start really making a dent on getting this thing going and getting it out of here. All right, we're making a little bit more progress now. I have the steering wheel out and I wanted to kind of give you guys a little word of advice if you're unfamiliar with like DIY steering wheel stuff if you've not done it before. So this piece right here that's turning is called your clock spring or your spiral cable, spiral cable, whatever you want to call it. But these things spin with the steering wheel. It's a little ribbon cable in here that is able to turn with the steering wheel and read the inputs via the buttons that you're pressing and everything. But when you take your steering wheel off, there's nothing really stopping this thing from just free spinning. And you want to be really, really careful when you remove a steering wheel if you plan on reusing this because if you don't keep this in about the same position, I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle room, but if you don't keep this, like if you spin this 360 degrees and then put your steering wheel on, what's going to happen is eventually when you go and drive the car and you go full lock, whatever way, you're going to snap this ribbon cable and all of a sudden you're going to have Christmas tree lights all over your dash. So what I've done while I'm in here messing with things is I've kind of jankly installed some zip ties and then put the bolt back in just to kind of give it some security like it still moves and it doesn't want to go anywhere but it's not like free spinning like it would be normally so I'm not worried about that going anywhere just make a mental note when you do that to be very careful um, otherwise you risk messing something up but anyways I'm gonna go ahead and keep removing what I can and uh, letting you guys know as I sort of figure out all the tricky stuff all right, so this is currently where I'm at. I just removed the whole glove box assembly, part of which you have to remove. There's an airbag down here. That's what that piece is over there. There's four screws. There's two that hold the airbag assembly to like the dash. And then there's two other little screws that hold this panel underneath to the airbag assembly. Once that's all out and dropped, there's six screws there's one here 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 and down here that hold the glove box in place you'll pull that out and then while you're just in the area you're gonna have to disconnect this when you pull out the glove box this for the light up there and then while you're over here you're gonna want to remove this a pillar and then down right here in that little hole hopefully it focuses to there down there, you can't see, but there is a Torx 20 screw with like a little washer. And all you need is just like a little socket with maybe like a step down bit. And I was able to loosen that screw up there just with my hand. You don't even need to get a tool. You just get some like good grip and you just do it. It's not very tight. And then when you get it loose, just take like a magnet or whatever you need and then like pop it out. Pretty simple. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all of this like radio stuff and the head unit up here and then remove the cluster and then at that point I'm pretty sure this dash will be 90% of the way ready to come out. I have to get the airbag from down under here and whatever panel I'm sure is under there and then I think this should be pretty much ready to go. So I will see you guys soon with hopefully this pretty much ready to come out. Alrighty, so as you just saw, I just pulled out the black dash and I want to show you guys real quick kind of what we're working with because I don't know if, I mean, I've seen cars with dashes off like so many times because like I work in the field, but I don't know if like you've ever seen it, but I just want to show you guys that like even on a BMW, 
I mean, I don't work on BMWs like professionally, just like for hobby, I'll work on like another brand, but I do want to point out, it looks like it's a lot. It looks really daunting. It looks really challenging. And there's like a lot of hardware and stuff that you got to remember, but it's not as bad as you think. Like once you start going and you start just taking off like one little piece at a time, like what, you know, the glove box and the A pillars, and you start taking a couple screws out, you get an idea that it's not nearly as hard as you think. And so don't be overwhelmed if you know you're not a frequent DIYer like I am or you work on cars professionally like I do. Just know that you're not alone. Um, take it step by step. Um, just do what you can. If you have to, take pictures with your phone and just kind of, you know, reference back to them if you aren't sure how it goes back together. But um, so far, I'm stoked. I mean, it's taken me a while because I've never pulled a dash out of an F10 ever in my life but i've pulled dashes out of other cars and so while it's taking me a couple of hours it's more just figuring out like okay like what screw has to come out here why isn't the glove box coming out right now like what you know oh there was a screw holding in the a pillar that i didn't know about i tried to pop it off because other ones that i'm familiar with just popped off things like that so hopefully going back in it shouldn't be nearly as difficult hopefully when i put the cinnamon one in it should be pretty easy. I know where all the clips are now. I know what has to go back in. I know how difficult it was coming out. So hopefully everything should just kind of go back in pretty smooth. I did take a few pictures just to kind of remember where like some wires like went through the dash. There's like cutouts inside of the dash that the wires go through and then they plug into components. So anyways, um, I'm going to compare the two and swap over whatever I need to swap over before I put the cinnamon one in. And then we're just going to throw it in and start buttoning it back up. All right, so I officially have the cinnamon uh, dash inside of the car. It's just sitting loosely. It's not bolted up or anything. The only thing I had to swap, let me show you guys. Bear with me a second. The only thing I had to swap, oh my gosh. While it was out is I swapped my speakers from my original dash to this one. I'm not sure like if the speakers that came in the cinnamon one here were the same like style i don't know if like that car that this dash came out of had like a certain uh, audio package so i swapped mine just in case and i swapped the airbag over there um again i'm not sure if that is part of like if it's coded to the car somehow or i'm not sure but i swapped it anyways why not i mean the one that was in my car was fine it wasn't throwing any code so keep it all as original as i can right but i'm gonna go ahead and start buttoning this up um install is in the reverse of you know obviously how you took it apart i'm not gonna go step by step into every little screw that i'm putting back that would take way 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 too long but uh i will catch you guys when this is mostly buttoned back up together all right man it's been like probably an hour hour and a half since the last clip that you guys saw but the car is officially all back together. Not a single screw or bolt is left over. Everything is back in, no fault codes, which means I probably plugged everything in right. And so far, everything is working. All the like uh, AC controls and radio controls and like the iDrive screen and everything. So super, super, super stoked on that. This was a really daunting project. I wasn't sure how difficult it was gonna be. And uh, honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad once I got it all out and I was able to know like how to put it all back together it was pretty straightforward it took probably half as much time to put it back in as it did taking it out but anyways uh I think that wraps this one up I'm gonna pull the car out and get some cool b-roll clips before the sun goes down it's like pretty nice lighting right now so if you stuck around to the end I appreciate it and uh as always I'll catch you in the next video peace